Today we're going to talk about free lip buzzing for trumpet players. So the first note is low C. You're going to hear the pitch so you can get it in your ear. And then you're going to breath attack your first free lip buzz. So it's going to sound like this. You hear the pitch first, then buzz up a half step. Two, three, and st stop, and so on and so forth. The other thing you can do is you could just, if you have access to a piano, play a B flat on the piano. Remember, piano and trumpet, we are uh, transposing instruments. So you play a middle B flat on the piano so you can get your Get your pitch right, and we want to buzz that note. So maybe you can use a metronome. Not that you have to do in time. Three, four. Rest, two, three, up a half step. And so on and so forth. So I hope that video helps. I hope it maybe raises more, maybe rather than raises more questions, answers more questions. And for you to start maybe sitting in front of a mirror and just kind of looking and feeling and then applying it to your horn. So once you get your mouthpiece out, you'll notice, okay, well, free lip buzzing, I was doing this. And just kind of feel. Right? And then the proof is in the pudding. How does it sound? So there are a number of benefits that come from just buzzing your lips as opposed to playing just a mouthpiece or even practicing your horn. Now, a lot of people, for them, they say they don't, they don't free lip buzz, they don't mouthpiece buzz, they find that it makes their chops stiff, they find no benefit, and to them I say, great, don't do it. Uh, I was the same way for many years. Until recently, I started really, really starting to break down my embouchure and try to figure out the components of playing with what we call like a trumpet face or the trumpet embouchure rather. So I'm going to get into these things that help me. So hopefully they will help you. One of the benefits is an isometric exercise. So we're working the corners, we're working our, what I call the trumpet embouchure and our trumpet face. So if you go on vacation and you don't have a mouthpiece, you don't have your horn, you do a little lip buzzing, that's gonna give you that, that little burn in the corners here. You're gonna feel it right here. And just as a side note, when I used to do it, I didn't feel any burn because I was using a different embouchure than I was when I was playing the trumpet. So I had a free lip buzzing embouchure as opposed to uh, m my regular embouchure. So there were two different embouchures and I don't think that's as beneficial in my opinion. So the other thing that you can work on is just getting the embouchure in the correct playing position for you. Now the embouchure is a touchy subject with many players and teachers because it's hard to manipulate and a lot of times we're not really sure what it is we need to change or how we can change. So this is one way of getting familiar with the parameters or the foundation and to be able to tweak and micro adjust so that your playing becomes easier or maybe you want to adjust your sound or your endurance so that you become aware of the moving parts. So here's some mistakes that I was making when I used to buzz back when I didn't know anything about the embouchure, I just put the horn on my face and played. So unfortunately, I don't have a natural embouchure. This is something I had to learn uh, from reading books, watching tutorials from, from my teachers, asking a million questions, and finding out what it is that 
is going to give you the best sound and the best endurance and the best range and the easy uh, and, and ease of playability. So this is what I was doing wrong in my opinion earlier. I had a receded jaw when I played and I had to get kind of this sound when I buzzed. Now I'm playing the inner part of my lips. Uh, my jaw's recessed. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I was checking if it was downstream or upstream. Not that it matters. But I got this. I couldn't get really high. And it didn't really work my corners. And it was just a different embouchure. So then I started reading the Philip Farkas book. And I'll put a link in the description about that book. Not a, that it's the end all be all. But it did start to make... You know, it did, it did make me wonder about, well, maybe there's a, something I'm not doing that might make my playing easier. So let me see if I can show you what that is. So I noticed when I did this, I put my jaw forward. See that? Everything, I start to get what I call the trumpet. They look like parentheses right here. And it's a little... The jaws forward and then the bottom lip draws a little bit tight against the bottom teeth, right? So now I've got that flat chin that Farkas is talking about. Not that that is something you have to have, but it is something I did notice that immediately was set once I put my mouth in this playing position. So this is the sound I get now. Instead of, I get this. Much easier to manipulate the sound. And notice the pitch is a little bit cleaner. Also, I can, pit, uh, I can buzz higher. I have more control of my pitch going up and down. So let me show you that, that move once again. So here's my relaxed position. So I bring the jaw forward. And then... Teeth are about, I don't know, a quarter inch apart-ish. And the jaw's forward and I... Trying to get my teeth a little bit more aligned like this. And then that way I can get this sound. And this was this happened almost overnight when I adjusted my jaw position and I guess the tautness of my bottom lip. Okay? So, once again, old way. I don't play like that. So it had a weird feel. It had a weird sound. And then I went from this to this. You see that? The move right there with the jaw coming forward. And there's a slight stretching back, but not with a lot of tension. It's kind of hard to show somebody do that until they feel how to do that. The other cool thing about free lip buzzing is that you're going to become aware of your facial muscles here. You're going to be aware of your jaw. You're going to be aware of your lips. Now, why is that important? Because let's say you want to adjust your sound on your horn. You can start to manipulate and micro adjust to get the sound that you're looking for. Now there's a great book by James Stamp called Warm Ups and Studies and he has a picture of him and I always and I always w w was like how do I get that look right and that's how I got it. James Stamp has a picture of himself lip, free lip buzzing in the book. There's also a few exercises in the very beginning uh, in the pre preliminary war preliminary warm up section of his book. And I also have a PDF free PDF and a play along on my website lip buzzing exercise and it's simply buzzing from low C in half steps up to tuning C. So you could do it two ways. You can go to the website, go to the beginning book and go to the subheading lip buzzing exercise.
I hope that helps. Be sure to send me any questions you may have. I'll answer them as best I can. I'm at jefflewistrumpet.com, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.